finally here. Hold on, hold on, I'm coming. There we go. Complete. It says complete, and it is complete, and it shall be complete. Hi, welcome. How are you? Hello. Good day. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Whatever it is, whatever time it is, wherever you are, hello. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, back in the studio-ish. And by studio, I mean my office. And by office, I mean this giant table covered in gear that I've been using for two years <laughs> to have some semblance of emotional, social, intellectual, and philosophical connection with you lovely people. So, hi. <laughs> um, I had... So, uh, good morning. Good to see you. <laughs> I, um... It's, uh, yeah, it is me. Hi, how you doing? Um, I had a, like... So, you guys know at this point the chip uh, decides when I get up. I can set an alarm, but, I mean, let's be honest. And, um, in setting that, you know, alarm, I know full well that two hours before when that, whenever that alarm is supposed to go off, Chip, um, are the, the youngest and most, uh, rambunctious of our cats will, um, crawl all over my head and decide he wants to be fed and that's how life is and I'll get up and do it in a total haze. I will absolutely, regardless of circumstance, get up and just drag myself in the middle of that like tired that you have from your body just um you know anesthetizing you so you don't punch yourself in your in the face in your own face during a dream and so um I'll get up and I'll go downstairs and um I make my little noise and he knows it's time to be fed which is great and it's just it's lovely and good morning. Thanks. Wow, a level four hype train already. I guess it's nice to be home. Thanks, guys. On Twitch, twitch.tv slash Al Sparks. Don't forget, you can subscribe with Prime and it doesn't cost you a dime. And uh, hi. The, the morning show is not the time for hard sells, though. Just help out in any way you can. We got to keep this thing rolling. It's getting, it's getting more popular and more expensive at the same time. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but it's true. All right, so um, I'll get up and feed Chip. And then I will drag my uh, ragged ass back to bed for, you know, to tr try and fall back asleep in a time scale that fits with when my alarm's going to go off. Because I if because a lot of times I will just stay up reading because I'm up and I hope that the that I'll, you know, I'll try to find the most boring statistical polling data, sociological demographic data that I could find that just that makes me go. And, and, uh, if that doesn't work, I don't know, you know, I just basically try to will myself to sleep. How would Adref help? Are you trying to avoid all that? No, uh, uh, Templeton's are at, it, it might, but I, I don't want to run ads on the show. I don't want to personally do this kind of like just the earbuds bullshit and all that. Like, I just don't think it's worth it. I think it's annoying to you guys. I don't think it's got, I don't think it quite frankly pays enough to deserve me. But also, I <laughs> um, like just throwing a product up for the fuck of it. It seems I don't know. Anyway, so back to the story. Um, uh, I would rather just put on a good show and hope it appeals to people. And if it if it does, they can show their appreciation. That's it. That seems like a better method. That's a better business plan to me. Um, so I go back to bed and I try to fall asleep, and then and usually I fall asleep. And I'll have about another hour because he's pretty good at the two hour before the alarm thing. And by God, I had a dream this morning. I had a dream today that was so realistic. That was so like one of those that's kind of almost dull in its realism. A lot of times, uh, not to put too fine a head on it, the, when I've had these dreams, they've been mild premonitions. I had one when I was 11 years old that I was in a garage surrounded by reptiles and this uh, 
uh, Asian man was telling me what to do. And this redheaded kid uh, who I thought was my next door neighbor, Kurt, but was always behind a wall because um, my next door neighbor, my best friend growing up had red hair. And then uh, whatever, t- how, how many years later would it be? Five years later, I did Frog. And the director was David Grossman, who's half Jewish and half Japanese and had long black hair. And he looked Japanese. And uh, Scott Grimes was in the scene with me. And we were shooting in a garage full of lizards. Ask my mom. She'll tell you the story. Because I told her the dream when I was 11. So when I have one of those, um, you had one last night. You want to write it down for a horror movie pitch? I'm sorry. Mine, mine would be too sexy for cable. But... It was, um, um, it was just kind of like a gathering of, of friends that were strangers that were friends. Like, I don't know these people, but somehow in the dream, I totally knew them. And, uh, it was just so intense, the dream itself, that I just woke up exhausted from it. Because I wasn't that, even that tired when I went to feed the cat. But when I got back up, I was like, Oh, did. I guess what made me uh, think of this was uh, there was a, a redhead in this one, too. I guess, that is that how I know it's going to be a premonition, is if there's a ginger in my dream? Uh, hi, Lisa. You Scottish witches, you. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, Lisa, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, and Moms Russo, thank you. And Gail... Uh, for hosting. Yeah, if you're on Twitch, you can host me on your channel or your page or wherever. That that helps. That lets the algorithm know I'm worthwhile. Um, it's been a crazy morning. And the hardest thing about mornings like this is that I have to avoid um, looking at them because, I mean, beyond whatever with this, the Don Jr. video that everybody's talking about, like, I, it's been up since, like, last night. And I'm like, I can't look at it because I got to do it this afternoon. I have to. We got to go. So I'm just, I'm not looking. I am not. Um, Reagan and WikiLeaks founder Jones can appeal a decision to allow his extradition to U.S. to face charges after astronaut Jackson extradited posted a British court rule. Yeah, they're going to, they're, it's a pissing match. That's fine. COVID-19, that's always part of it. Bella Hadid uh, spoke about the never-ending effect of pain and stress that alcohol gave her. Gave, gave. Cave. All right. That's an interesting word. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, I have done my fair share of drinking. <laughs> what is your fair share? Oh, <laughs> this is the tree of life. I'm sorry. If I'm wandering through the woods and you appear, ma'am, I am not falling for your intoxicating gaze. I am not. I'm, I've seen, I've, read too many too many Tolkien novels to fall for this nonsense. You are not luring me into a spider's web. I don't I'm not falling for it, ma'am. <laughs> yes. We want another shrubbery. Bah! I think that's supposed to be your lungs. This is from an x-ray of my lungs and yet yeah, it's, it's, it's lungs. And then what do you say? Nice set of lungs. I mean, honestly. Um, okay, we'll do. Uh. Oh, yeah, the, the, um, thank you, the, uh, <laughs> The new, oh, the Don Jr. video, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I mean, we've seen a bunch of these, but it takes a while for everybody to give a crap, CSL, about uh, about any of his Rumble videos. If there's any indication that Don Jr. is firing blanks in a media sense, it's the fact that his dumbest videos take forever to surface. <laughs> yes, nice breast trees, right? Um... I'm sensing a theme. All right. Seriously, I how is this woman not trying to slip me a Mickey? 
<laughs> Are you not enjoying your martini, Mr. Bond? It's, it's a little... It's a little salty. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. For context, Bella gave up drinking about six months ago. She previously had made headlines in 2014 for getting a DUI when she was just 17 years old. That's why the thing. So they're doing... I'll tell you why it's in the news all of a sudden. Because her PR agent it thinks there's been just enough time and they can start... They can make a positive story out of it. Yep. Um... Oh, everybody's doing their hashtag. I'm totally done with COVID, guys. So you're done with COVID? Who's done with Fauci? <laughs> Mask mandates for children are cruel and stupid. The mandates will lose. Good morning, I'm done with COVID and I'm hoping this hashtag trends. New York City angry mom and totally a real account and not a foreign influence campaign sock puppet. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that going around. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting how most of these things start off as something that's supposed to be indicative of a, uh, you know, of a trending mentality that of, of, uh, the people who support being quote unquote done with COVID and, and all that stuff. And yet the majority of these things end up being people who are mocking it. Oh, is that, is she the one who said it? Oh, I'm done. It's yeah. like, I, I went so hard on COVID. I, yeah, I sprayed the Pringles cans that I bought at the grocery store, stripped my clothes off because I thought COVID would be on my clothes. Like, I did it all. I watched Tiger King. I got to the end of Spotify. Like, we all did it, right? And, no, no, we didn't okay, well, well, here's the thing. A lot, no, of us, a lot of us did do it. And then we were told, you get the vaccine. You get the vaccine and you get back to normal. And we haven't gotten back to normal. And it's ridiculous at this point. I know that so many of my liberal and progressive friends are with me on this and they do not want to say it out loud because they are scared to be called anti-vax or to be called science denial. No, I don't think the problem in that circumstance is, is that you're saying that you're done with COVID or you're emotionally over it or you've been through a lot because everybody feels that way. Who gives a shit? You know what I mean? I'd rather walk in the rain without an umbrella most of the time. Because I like the feel of rain on my face and the like. But I'd rather not be soaking wet when I get where I'm going. Right? That's that's just... I can feel one way, but the reality isn't going to shift. The other thing is, is when has... Um, when, you know, the death rate is down specifically because of vaccinations. That's it. I mean, the and the folks that are clogging up the hospitals and clogging up the ICUs are people who are like, who feel this way, who felt this way months ago before they, you know, before the vaccine wave and just, I'm not going to do it. And so the, you know, fresh graves are filled with the Kirsten W's of the world. And this idea that you're done with something and, oh my God, I'm so over it. Like it's a, like it's a, like lost like the show Lost, you you know, it, there was no ending and you were always promised an ending. And I'm like, oh, God, I can't believe I was ever into that show. Like to have the same kind of tonal mentality about it is the problem. Because adults do have moments of frustration. If you have children, if you have an elder adult, if you have 
a you know a crotchety uncle who's you know a pain in the ass you have moments of realistic of emotional annoyance or just being overwhelmed by it but you recognize that to be the best person you can be in this situation or to even be a mature adult at baseline you you can't just act on that frustrated whim you know what i mean it's like sitting at an intersection where you know where the 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 lights are out and everybody's having to treat it like a um like a stop sign or you know and on you know a four way stop and and everybody's going and somebody usually gets frustrated trying to figure out whose turn it was and they try to junk their way through the intersection and nearly kill everybody it's it's like that it's it's petty and her the issue is is that she's you know she is vaccinated more than likely boosted what she means is the rest of society i suppose or to be, you know, smeared as a Trumper. I'm sorry, if you believe the science, you will look at the data that we did not have two years ago, and you will f find out that cloth masks do not do... Bullshit. Anything. Bullshit. They limit the amount of virus you take into your body, which directly affects how sick you can be. It's just true. The amount your body is impacted by it, how fast it grows in your system. If you get a big dose versus a small dose, why we lost healthcare workers in the beginning. If you get a big dose versus a small dose, um, your body has more time to kind of figure out what this pathogen is than if you're overwhelmed, just breathing in big inhales of it everywhere you walk. It's silly. Like it's mathematically an obvious thing. You will realize that you can show your vaccine passport at a restaurant and still be asymptomatic and carrying Omicron. And you will realize... Right. But you've been vaccinated, so it's more about you're not going to clog up the hospital if you get sick. You're, you're amongst other people who, if they get Omicron because it's you're asymptomatic, none of the people that are in that restaurant or that are going out and gathering in groups are going to end up in an emergency room. They're not going to overwhelm the medical system. We have a spike because of, the, because of how fast Omicron is spreading. This is fucking dumb. This Because of how fast Omicron spreads, the volume of hospitalized and, and, and dying because of it is just broader. It's not a more virulent disease. It is much closer to the flu in terms of its numbers. But since it's spreading so fast and because people are like, I can't wait to die by, uh, you know, breathe in my face, that... That it's spreading way faster than even the flu would in these circumstances, considering nobody's going to the office like they used to. It's amazing how fast it's spreading. And the volume of people getting it means that even though a smaller percentage will end up in the hospital and even a even smaller percentage will end up dying from it, because there's such a bigger number of infected, the bigger number of hospitalized in debt. And they will be sequestered to a specific group of people who are, wait for it, dumb dumb, not vaccinated. It's infantile. As most importantly, that this is going to be remembered by the younger generation as a catastrophic moral crime. The city of Flint, Michigan, which is 80%, I think, minority students, has just announced indefinite virtual schooling. In the past two years, we've seen among young girls a 51% increase in self-harm. People are killing themselves. They are anxious. They are depressed. They are. Yeah, but that has nothing to do with that. Happened in in horrible winters. That didn't make the snow go away. I, this is such an asshole thing to bring up in these circumstances, especially because in in great s snowstorms in you know fucking Salem and uh, Nordic countries or during the Dust Bowl when you couldn't fucking get anywhere and everybody was isolated. But if you went outside, you'd fucking die. There was more self-harm and more suicide. That, uh, that doesn't mean the solution is going out into the snowstorm and dying in the snow. And this, uh, this goes to 
this goes to the conversation we have a lot about percentages and actual numbers. A 51% rise in reported self-harm. I guarantee that a bunch of these kids, because I once was a kid and I know a lot of people, all the people I know used to be ch kids at one point. Um, in high school especially, People were aware of the self-harm that their kids were doing because they did it on campus or off campus on their way home or to a friend's house. But since everybody was home, you saw your kid was cutting. You, you, you saw your kid was doing this stuff. It's, it's partly acute because you're there. Part of the, the, the um, you know, to weigh into a way that she might comprehend the number of uh, myocarditis, you know, cases in 15, 16, 17-year-old boys was higher. Well, why is that? Because they've just been to the doctor. They've just been uh, vaccinated. Everybody's keeping an eye on it. And any symptom is like, is there something? And they went and checked. And the the rare cases of myocarditis and, and similar cardiac arrhythmias and other issues in young growing men that you phase through that just like so, a lot of babies are born with a hole in their heart and it seals up over time and that's always a big test, but it's a lot more common than people think. When when a, when a 15 year old, 16, 17 year old is just lazy for a little while, turns out he's having, you know, he might very well have had myocarditis during that time, but nobody, they're just going to think he's a lazy 15 year old. He's laying around all the time. Part of it's because he's growing and his body is shifting gears as his physical body grows like fucking Spock in in uh you know in the search for Spock in Star Trek three, and you know you grow quickly in these periods, especially when your hormones kick in, and it fucks with your system, and so people ignore what might be a physical symptom, and and most survive it, most outgrow it, so you never diagnose it, and so as we're more acutely watching people, you'll get more acute diagnosis. In the same way that you will see parents, you know, parents will see in stark relief their kid who is having issues because they're in the goddamn house all the time. They have been for two years. When they're doing school from home, they're going to see more of their kids' interactivity and their personality and, and what they're going through and their problems and their joys and all that stuff. They're going to see more of that because they're home. And so a 51% rise... In, in those cases is every bit as much attributable to the fact that you're fucking seeing it in your kid that was doing it anyways where you might have just missed it till it was too late than it is to COVID in their home all the time or they're lonely. 51% rise in it. Shut the fuck up. Lonely. That is why we need to end it more than any inconvenience that it's been to the rest of us. I think... <laughs> it's, 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 it's like Again, this is a misreading of, of statistics and, um, and the wrong solution for it. This is a... Um, my kid is afraid of... Uh, can't swim and is afraid of freezing to death. So I think we should go down, crack a hole in the pond, and dunk her so that she learns that it's nothing to be afraid of. That cold and water are... We'll just do a twofer. It's a pandemic of bureaucracy. It's a pandemic of bureaucracy. It's not, it's not real anymore. It's not real anymore. Whoa. I mean, can can you imagine the combination of ego and ignorance in this circumstance? Because I've talked to you guys multiple times about how if you look at the science around Omicron, it is less virulent. We are fading towards a point. I've even said masks are going to come off in the next six weeks. They are definitely coming down. But it's going to have to be a phase out in case... There's a Delta left hook waiting out there. And that's why the CDC and the NIH and other groups will always worry about that because that's their fucking job. It's like when, it's like when um, 
you know, like Assange or, or, or Glenn Greenwald or one of these folks will go the, the, you know, they'll leak a document that the Pentagon has a, has a, you know, a secret war game to attack Guam and Cuba and Japan or something nonsensical like that. Just as random. They have this thing to, to attack Germany again. And in reality, that's only because there's somebody's job at the DOD all the time to wargame every possible turn. All of a sudden, Germany decides to go Hitlerian, Nazi-ish again. What do we do strategically in a modern society with the, the internet and satellites and shit like that? Stuff that would have changed the face of war in World War II. What do we do in that situation? And so they, they have four or five guys there uh, and women and uh, and people of all spectrums because different ideas are good, go out and game that. What do, you, what do you see as the problems? What do you see as the solutions? What do you see as the challenges specific to the time we're in for fighting in that theater? And what, what might we learn from gaming that out that we might apply to something that's more realistically that would happen like Lithuania or Belarus or something like that? And they do that all the fucking time, right? It's their job. And you leak out one of them, it makes it look special. You send out one aspect of it and it looks like, what the what do they have a problem with Germany for? And like, they don't. They they literally, in between us getting attacked by countries or us engaging in NATO or, or you know, the Bosnia Herzegovinas of the world, or hopefully in the future, how we would handle something like Rwanda coming up again. All they do all the time is prepare for the worst. Because it's their fucking job. You you want me on that wall. You need me on that whole idea, right? Same thing with the CDC. The, and by the way, it's the CDC P. And, that's, and that P is very important, as Donald Trump will know. Um, P is very important to the conversation. As, uh, as th this young lady probably um, had to buy some sort of apparatus to try her alternative treatments. Um, uh, it's, just a, it's, it's basically just a a funnel with a rubber hose on it, you know, it's like shotgunning. Anyways, um, <laughs> that the, the CDC is the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. And that prevention part means they're on guard all the time. And so you have to listen to what they're saying in the context of they're on guard all the time. Because you want them on guard all the time. And you have to go, look, I know this is 100% you. And you become your own mayor of Amity Island, you know, in, in Jaws. Yes, I know that's a problem. How much does it weigh against me being able to feed myself? And, you know, and eventually, you know, in this case, there was a giant shark. So we went that way. Sometimes, like when there's a, the, the Ebola outbreaks, which seem to rescind themselves... Right, we we get this like oh shit, you know, like when you see like uh, the what was the name? What was that book like? Oh god damn it! It was like it, the movie that outbreak was. Uh, no, that's not gonna be on there. Yeah. Um, Hot Zone. That's what it was. Hot Zone was the book that like. Outbreak and all those other movies are based on, and it's it is a, a great microcosm in the in the interim in the story about how it's not serious. Is it serious? Oh my God, it's serious. How do we convince everybody it's serious? Nobody believes it's serious, and then they're like, everybody believes it's so serious. We just got to nuke the town, and somebody's like, you can't nuke the town. We can solve this. Like, no, it's too serious to solve. You just got to end it, and that's the conversation that happens in these you know in the like the hyper acute versions of this. The problem with COVID is it's low roll and it's why it killed so many people and why it got through was because it could, yes, it could convince you. Huh, not bad, Hal, folks. Uh, it's teaching you if you want to listen. Uh, <laughs> you can tell when I read some of the posts and laugh and carry on. That's nice. Um, so, yeah, Andromeda Strain, all those kind of things. Those are all those are all basically war games in novel form. Hey, what's happening, Dallas? By the way, um, everybody shout out where you are this morning so we know how mega worldwide we are.
Reading, no. Seeing, yes. <laughs> so I'm going to, you know, Bill won't have me on um, for, a, hey, look at that. Michigan, PA, Flint, yay. Denver, Plano, Illinois, Tennessee, Oakland. Illinois, there you go. Tatooine, it's hot, as always. Ireland, beautiful. Look at that. Lansing, San Juan Island, Washington, beautiful. London, hey, Renita. Chicago, I love my Chicago. San Francisco, it was nice coming back from there this weekend. Look at that. I know, the chat goes so fast when everybody checks in all at once. It's beautiful. Vegas, Marshalltown, New Jersey, Yucca Valley, look out. Joe, you're in a, a Chinese town? There you go. Some tongue shirt. Me too, I some tongue shirt. Hmm? I was like, what What city are you in? Like, you, what city do you stay in? Literally. You stay what city? Never mind. Anyways, you get the point. Joliet, Fresno, look at this. Hanover Park, Massachusetts. You guys are all over the place and it's beautiful. I'll talk about today's market crash. It's a dip. You have to understand. All right. <clears throat> Quick uh, lesson that anybody can understand about the American stock market. You want to do this? Hold on. I got to look something up. So, oops, I'm typing in the wrong thing. Damn it. Um, I had the wrong keyboard on. Um, let's see. <clears throat> FDI stock in FDI figures now. There you go. This is 20 July. Yeah, this is just last July. This is when it started to go up a bunch. Um, money managers worldwide put more than $900 billion into U.S. funds in the first half, a record amount. First half of the year, um, uh, money managers put $900 billion dollars and it didn't stop. I mean, that's just part of it in the U.S. stock market. Um, let's see. Tony owns stock foreigners and rich Americans. There we go. This is an older thing. This is 2020. But here's a chart. Yeah, here you go. Here's the... Look at the amount of foreign investment. That's the orange. That right there. See that? This right here, this is uh, foreign investment in the U.S. stock market starting 1965 to present. It is an enormous, this is IRAs, this is defined contribution plans, this is taxable accounts, meaning, uh, you know, and this isn't even caught up. This is to 2019. This is basically pre-Robin Hood. So there is a sliver about this size that is going to grow to this size in the Robin Hood world over the next little bit. Especially these people, you know, like cryptocurrency just screwed everybody and like because they're fucking dumb. A asking about like unless you're a uh, a multinational cocaine cartel <laughs> having cryptocurrency in this day and age is absurd. It's silly. It can't, you can't use it in most stores. It hasn't, none of them have steadied. Stabilized. Oh, bye. Love you. See you later. Have a good meeting. Um, and so this is, um, and this is 20, like I said, 2019 numbers. 
right now, if you like, if you took out all the foreign investment in 1965, it wouldn't be shit. It would just this would be this would be human like rich humans, just individuals. This is what it used to be. Remember, like the idea that you know cigar chomping fat guys and the and the dukes um, from trading places owned. Uh, yeah, don't sell anything, Evo. Um, because the companies are all still worthwhile. Like that's why you invest. I, like the day trading and swing trading assholes are panicking because they don't know how to read anything. It's silly. I mean, honestly, like this is so goofy. You don't get cryptocurrency. Good for you, Kath, because it's you shouldn't. The minute you you're like, I understand crypto. Like you're a lunatic. <laughs> it's like it, it, anybody who plays uh Fortnite and and puts in V bucks so they can buy uh outfits for their virtual character and then they could sell that virtual character if they decide to not play the game anymore on eBay and somebody could pay them cash for that account or whatever that's that's cryptocurrency it's fucking stupid anyways so here's where it used to be this is a foreign investment and then b -b -b boom almost half I mean we're getting into that right look at nonprofits with their little blue line um and then this yellow of like mixed investment, almost half. Um, and if you look at what's happening in China right now and in Germany's economy and Russia's economy, where do you think the richest people in those countries put their money when, in, when the stock market is going up? In the US system, because it's fucking safe. You're not gonna put it in the Nikkei or the or 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 the like the Beijing Stock Exchange, which just started up like six months ago. You're gonna put it in the Dow. You're gonna put it in the U.S. stock market because those companies, even if they they vacillate in profitability and whether they go up and down, and Tesla stock is this blah blah, blah it's still a legit company. And it's gonna be around. Bear Stearns not included, but the but the rest of them, the companies that make shit, the you know the mining companies and the and the and the like like Apple who makes phones, and shit, like they're gonna keep doing it, and they know it. Yeah, Yemeni tech stocks, right? That's where they're putting it. <laughs> so, um, the United States economy is fairly solid. It's I mean, it's, if, considering the you know, the fact that we're recovering from something that was real, right? Our inflation, while bad year over year, is nowhere near as fucked as, I mean, look, go look up Turkey and inflation right now. Go look up Russia's inflation numbers. China just dropped interest rates while having inflation. It's because there's no money circulating. and Like, their debt crash is fucking incredible right now. 300% of GDP. It's a nightmare. Ours is basically 100% of GDP, meaning that if we took all our money from one year that we make in the United States and just went, okay, everybody pool your money this year, pay off the debt. And again, the analogy I would use when, when people talk about this, they always, you know, Republicans love it. It's like, if the government balanced its books like a family did, they'd fucking blah, blah, blah. That whole story. We've heard that forever, right? We've heard that. How long have you heard that story? If the government had to balance their books like a family did, well, first of all, that family um, would have to be in a situation where their income for a year was equal to the total cost of their house. Everything about their house. Not just the building, but the security, because the defense budget is in there, the t uh, their phone bill, because the telecommunications and, and smart grid uh, additions and the, and the FAA, all their travel for the year. Think about that. Think about every aspect of your of your life, uh, you know, and and your debt is equal to that one year. And so, of course, you would go, all right, so you make, let's say, you make $30,000 a year and your house costs $30,000. Or in the case of the United States, $24,000 because we have a $24 trillion economy and about a $24.5 trillion uh, debt. And it vacillates all the time, so this, the number's silly anyways. But well, let's just go with that. Almost one-to-one. -one. 
Imagine right now with your bet with your life debt, what you have going on, you make twenty-four thousand dollars a year and your house costs twenty-four thousand dollars. That just your house. Now, on top of that, imagine not only you make twenty-four thousand dollars a year, all in before taxes, this is what you get in. Your your house costs eighteen thousand dollars, your car costs two thousand dollars. Your alarm system and uh, your food, travel, and entertainment costs are 4000 or so. And then there's ancillary costs all over the place. Like, tw- you're, you're, you're one-to-one. Your whole fucking life costs your yearly salary. Of course, you would take the house cost, which is the longest one. That's infrastructure. That's long-term shit. And you would extrapolate it over 10-year goals and go, how do we pay this down over 10 years? Oh, look how far we are. We can maybe we take out an equity loan and build the house a little bit, give ourselves a little more space. That's how you would live. And that's how the United States lives. And this whole like they're printing money bullshit is fucking cartoonish. We've heard it forever. It's infantile. The the Fed doesn't even do it like that. It's just. And every time Republicans are out of power, that's what they start clamoring about. And every time Democrats get in, they're like, they're printing money. And then we end up with a surplus because that's not actually how it works. So where can we buy a house at that price? Well, um, uh, if my if my 3D printing dream comes true, Orange Leon, um, it will be not too far off. Although the real estate uh, industry will hate it. And most people, because they consider... Um, and by the way, as houses get cheaper over time to make of quality, it, the stock market and all the investment opportunities in human life will expand because your house won't be the place you make the most money. If you buy, you know, if currently a $400,000 house, if it ultimately costs about $60,000 to make, it's the land you're really buying. So you tack on an extra $60,000, it's $120,000. Now you've got this extra money that you were going to spend in in, uh, in in interest and all that stuff. Um, how's lying? You can't get a lot for 24K. I'm, it's a, Wes, it's not a real house. I'm talking, I'm making an analogy. <laughs> I'm not talking about an actual place. I'm talking about the one for one. Okay, here you go, Wes. You make a million dollars a year and your house and every expense you have, everything, transportation, your alarm, all that stuff, forever, by the way, costs a million dollars. That's your one to one. That's where we are. If you made $5 million a year and your house and everything you spend in it is $5 million, you're just one to one it. Anyways, how dare your analogies be out of date? Right. <coughs> gotcha. Okay, Wes. So, um, first thing you're printing is a flying saucer. Shh, don't tell anyone. All right. So, right now, um, we all know that, let's see, um, that rich people in Turkey um, invest in the U.S. stock market. Do you think they are leaving their money in the stock market right now or are they taking some wins while the numbers were high and paying their bills with the money that they can have from that? Uh Uh-huh. Do we have to have the uh, Billy Ray Valentine conversation about the G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip and clearing out all the suckers? Um... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh, no, no, no. Here, hold on one second. Something. There you go. This is. I, I was going to pick a U.S. source, but I figure. So here's here's Russia. You're a Russian oligarch. You got your money all over the world. A lot of it's in the U.S. stock market. And things are taking a shit. You're going to pull some money to pay your bills. And you're going to pull it from the U.S. stock market because it's overvalued currently by all... By, you know, if you listen to your money manager or whoever, I watch a bunch of these idiots on YouTube just to, like, compare them against demographic and geopolitical stuff that's going on 
because it's indicative of how people think of the world. And these, all these assholes are talking like 2020 never happened. They're all acting. Right? They're all acting like 2020 never happened. How just printing imaginary numbers is like the life of brain. I am by no means. He's just making it up. No, he isn't. Um, so this is this is where a lot of that's coming out. People are taking profits and especially foreign accounts. And when you get in that situation, you have if you could shave off this is why we feared the Saudis, like we talked about, because they could take this piece out in an afternoon and screw the whole thing. That's the way it's been. And now not so much anymore because we don't care. <laughs> we don't. Sorry, the United States is doing really well compared to the rest of the world. And if you think it should be doing better, um, you're just imagining 2020 never happened. I could argue in my spare time. <laughs> you came here for an argument. No, you didn't. Next time use jelly beans, right? <laughs> yeah. This is like a jar of jelly beans. The orange ones are foreign investment. Yeah. Yeah. So the point I'm trying to make is that um, a lot of people, if you watch anybody, and we see this on the right wing all the time, they're talking about the economy as if 2020 ever happened, as if we're not reshoring factories to the United States, which is a two, three year process in a lot of cases, as if supply chains from China are just frankly being cut off because people don't want stuff from there anymore that that major shift economically is not going to affect the bottom line of the united states and in fact the rest of the world and do you not want it to because if you're telling me that we shouldn't have to go through this this tightening or this difficulty then you're basically saying that why should i worry about xinjiang slavery So it's out saying the current correction is casino or stock markets, <laughs> foreigners cashing out. That's part of it. Yeah. And it triggers all the algorithms because the shit ton of this is digital now. Everybody's got a computer hooked up. All the rich investors have an, a, like, have like AI trading for them, that shit. So if it drops 5%, then it automatically goes into this, you know, drop zone, stays there. But then if it starts to kick back up, because the the minute it drops, the algorithm says, ooh, buy the dip. And then it bops back up. If you watch any of these things, they're like 5% down today, 5% up, 5% down, 5% up. It's so like mechanical these days. The only ones that have like weird normal numbers, like 7% or 12%, are the ones that that's happening to and individual vet investors are paying attention to whatever. So... And again, the stock market is not indicative of the overall economy. And it's more indicative these days of where savings is going to go. And there was the, the Fed even talking about raising interest rates um, made everybody do this, like jump around. So like that whole part, I mean, there's so much to it. But let me see if I can, we'll just grab into something midway. It's a fascinating conversation. There's a lot, there you go. Here you go. This is the, I don't want the, right there. let's see. Yeah, here you go. Now, um, let me pull this page off so I can look at it separately. And then look at this one, and then go back here, and then go back to there. And then I'll look at this thing, All right? Yeah. Yeah, so this is the into correction territory. Now, everybody's been talking about this. Like, everybody's like, we're due for a correction. We're due for a correction. They keep saying this. Like, you've heard this forever. Now, bit spark coin is on skyrocket. Please send all your money to me. That's really right. Um, um, Unilever, Peloton, Kohl's are attracting the IRA for powerful investors. Like, this is just hash noises. Um, this this is the primary one. Um Sharpest daily drop in more than a year. Um, by percentage, again, Wall Street was hit with another wave of selling on Monday, falling deeper into a plunge that started earlier this year. With investors rattled by concerns, the Federal Reserve will have to remove its support for the economy much faster than expected. They're not going to do it. S&P 500 fell more than 3.5% midday, headed for its biggest drop since the technology stocks was a leading edge this year's decline. Fell even further on Monday. Tech-heavy NASDAQ composites slid more than 4.5% on fucking... Peloton, please. 
Um, so this is, uh, and again, most tech stocks are long term. How your show is making the far right angry. How dare you use data and facts? I know it's terrible. These these folks um, are you know I mean there are a ton of stocks that are overvalued. There's meme stocks hanging around. The AMC not leaving stuff is going to happen. The Fed, the like, but this is again. Where's our point percentage drop? Let's see, like uh, the earnings over year. Let's see. Yeah. So the so basically everybody's like eek, and they're going to sell some stuff. <clears throat> they're going to cause this. It's not going to crater anything. And then it's going to go back up 3,000 points. Like, it's silly. Because the, the the companies haven't lost value. The only problem that they have is, you know, is it, on the individual level is like Tesla deciding to build a, uh, a factory in Xinjiang, which is going to drive some investors away. But it's not going to change their outlook over the years and that kind of nonsense. It's... I mean, what you're watching is psychology. You're not watching, uh, oh, Jeff, great. I'm glad I cured you of your fear bites. Stocks are not for rich dudes anymore, D, uh, D4MD. Not by any stretch. And that's part of what you're seeing. Because tech stocks, this area is where the individual investors are more than the traditional stuff. The NASDAQ is where people buy, you know, uh, I'm I'm buying stock in game companies and shit like that. And by the way, look at this little jag and then boink, boink what's happening here. This is, this looks like uh, when Billy Ray Valentine said, you, uh, you I'd, I'd wait, you'd have cleared out all the suckers by then, right? So there's this, um, there are two kind of extraordinary investor ideas that people talk about. And I'm not a heavy investor. I've, you know, I started an investment account like on Robinhood because my girlfriend's kids start wanted to start one and I was like, okay, I want to make sure it's okay and we'll do it together and see how it works and just minor shit. But because of that, you get you sign up, you get all this like financial news stuff and then um, you, you know balanced against there's a shit ton of YouTubers. I've shown you guys and they're always clamoring the end of the world is coming. always, always, always. And then it doesn't and then they're like, God damn it. You have people from around the world. It's true, uh, Kristen. There's a bunch of fo folks in here. <laughs> folks in here. Yeah, it's not rational. Yeah, and a lot of people. There's a lot low risk and high risk. High risk is the Nasdaq. That's where the high risk, you know, volatility. Because here today, gone tomorrow. Oh, you like? Oh man, I'm making so much money on Theranos, and then pfft, right. <laughs> um, Tesla stock is is bloviated and inflated. We can't figure out why. And then he's going to announce after the stock goes down, he's going to buy a bunch of it back. And then they're going to announce the Tesla HVAC unit for houses, which they don't have out yet. And there's just rumors of it right now. Yeah, the high efficiency heat pumps that are everybody's tickled about. There you go. The Tesla heat pump and air filter tech. Um, they're basically taking the air conditioning that's in the car that uses very little electricity because it's an electric car. So they don't want it to, they, they want the most efficient heating and cooling system in the car. And they just decide, well, you make it bigger. It's a matter of, matter of fucking scale, right? So they're going to announce this as, as a real thing. And then back you go. So, um, and then boop, it goes back up 200 points, right? Or $200 or whatever the shit. It's like, it doesn't really matter. Um, um, yeah, I think, yeah, right. And, and most people are <laughs> ever buy a, buy high, sell low. Yes. Um, so this kind of stuff, like there, there's a bunch of people who are like, Ooh, because the, even with the taper that the fed was talking about, they're talking about a quarter of a percent three times over the next year, if they do it. And, and people know this. So all the people who are panicking are either misreading the news or whatever. And they're just going to buy back in, and I guess. Like, it's, honestly, you think I, like, it keeps me up at night worrying about the fucking stock market? Remember when the stock market crashed, and then it went back up? Remember that time? <laughs> Remember in your life when it took a huge shit, and it was like, it's the end of the world, and then it went back up? Remember that part? And then it kept going up, and then it went down from where it was up, 
but it was still up from where it was down. Remember that? I remember that. You guys remember that? Fucking hell. Ooh. Like panic sellers and buyers and stuff. Can you imagine living in that world? Christ, there's not enough cocaine in the world to make me give a shit like that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right, Wes? Or, you know, remember, remember that time when that happened that one time? And then it never recovered? Oh, right. Jesus. Yeah, the flash crash, right? But Apple, good move. Because it's a company with legs that's building worthwhile shit that's going to better people's lives. Now, you know, so the so this stuff, and again, when inflation goes up, a lot of your retail investors and your one-offs and your retirees and that kind of stuff will take stuff out. They'll sell some to take a little off the table. I guarantee that right about, uh, you know, you know, a week ago, a week before this happened, um, financial planners for a bunch of old people were telling them, you know, you might want to take a little off the table right now, take a little winnings, and then we'll we'll see about reinvesting if it seems to go down. Right. That's that's and then a week later, and then it goes back up. It's like for fuck's sake. Most this is mostly run by machines now, anyways. It's about like so silly. The people act like there's somebody looking at fucking ticker tape, smoking a cigar, and it's 1935. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Um, let's, uh, I love these conversations. You, you guys know when we went to, um, oh man. So we're, oh, get out of here, Bloomberg, you prick. Um, let's see. So, uh, so this is Turkey's inflation. <laughs> By the way, we're we're at uh, approximately seven percent year over year. They're at thirty six point eight oh eight percent year over year. They're expected to hit forty four percent year over year. Well, their year over year was after this up, 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 up like that. Like this is you're going back to January. Of last year, it's based on a 14 point that was already there. Ours was negative, you know, in most cases. Ours is all gas. All right. We are... We are transitioning away from gasoline driving cars for a reason. And one of the biggest reasons is... is um, is national security. I don't know why, but everybody seems to have forgotten tw f what? 15 years ago, height of the beginning of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, and everybody was talking about no blood for oil and oil, and with these, we're really fighting war for oils, and these were oil nuts all oil, right? Right? Yes, my, this is a NASA, uh, <laughs> This is from the Smithsonian. This is from the one that Carl Alessi uh, told me to go to. The the uh, this is the <laughs> this is the coffee mug I got at the at the one that's out by the Dulles Airport. There's two Smithsonian like Chip, chillax, man. Chips running around like a maniac. Um, so yeah, it's cute. It, I mean, it's this part of the cup is useless, but it's basically just a little mug on a little little. <laughs> Lifters. Space Force. All right. Yay. Uh, Twitch is back. Look at that. Oh, by the way, you're watching House Sparks Mornings Mega Worldwide. This is the sort of freewheeling show that we do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, just to kind of get our groove on, talk philosophically about stuff, go down some rabbit holes, you know? Talk about some shit. Talk about some fun shit that seems to be... Um, you know, for all the clamor about the mainstream media is ignoring this narrative. And you're like, it, okay. There are basically these two sides of a conversation that's happening right now <clears throat> um, on in, in the news media. And a good portion of the time, they're both wrong. They're saying the same information, but they're wrong about it for, the, for different reasons, right? So anyways, like and subscribe. Give a thumbs up. You want to see Chip? He walked right in. Hi, buddy.
Hi, buddy. They want to say hi. They want to say hi. Are you having a good time this morning? Are you okay? Mm, I love that. You don't. All right. Can I can I put you outside? The, because you're going to knock around. I know. You want to go play with that. I'm going to go kick it out the door, and you're going to follow the mouse. Follow the mouse. Hit it. Hit it. There you go. And I'm going to shut the door. Because <laughs> he's going to kick that thing under the couch, under the desk. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he just ran into the door. Um, yeah, he got very big. But he still, he'll always, oh, and I've covered hair already. Um, anyways, <clears throat> so, um, I, like and subscribe, thumbs up, where was I before we got distracted by kitten? Uh, but he's just going to be a kitten forever. I'm just convinced. He's just always going to be a kitten. Sorry. So, um, the, the storyline about the U.S. place in the world, debt, Afghanistan, all that stuff is so insanely off base caught between two people like two conversations one where the doomsayers who make a living doomsaying and if doom you know ever comes they're screwed because that's you know it's the, I guess the Cassandra moment where they it's all over but it's never going to and they know it so they keep selling it from the great reset on Glenn Beck's show to the great, you know, Pentaveret, Super Jew, George Soros takeover that Russell Brand seems to be afraid of, to the Alex Jones lizard people and all that stuff. There are always there's always something out there. The doom, yeah, the doom sellers are I mean, they've been cleaning up. Oh yeah, let's go Nasara Jasara. Right. Exactly. Oh yeah, you guys don't know what Nasara Jasara is. That's another version of the Great Reset, and the um, um. Let's see if I can bring up the uh, stay take go da da da. Transition agree. Yeah, there we go. Executive order, there we go, hold on. Yeah, this is a draft executive order that would reset, um, let's see, if, let me find something. Yeah, the new financial system, the revolution. Let's see, there's somebody on, okay. yeah, here you go. Uh, cancels all cr credit card debt, here you go. Cancels all credit card mortgage debt due to illegal banking government activities. May refer this as jubilee or complete forgiveness of debt. Abolishes the income tax. Abolishes the IRS. With employees of the IRS will be uh, transferred to the U.S. Treasury sales tax area. Creates a 17% flat rate non-essential new items only. Non-essential new items only. So you can't. they can't tax anything you sell used. So Etsy, you're cool. Or eBay. Increases benefits senior citizens using what taxes? I have no idea. Yeah, by taxing only brand new things you buy, we will increase uh, benefits to senior citizens. It's going to be lovely. Returns constitutional law to all courts and legal matters like they don't already have it. What the fuck does that mean? Reinstates the original title of nobility amendment. All right. Establishes new presidential and congressional elections within 120 days. Yeah, so whoever it is, whoever signs this into law, will immediately have to face a, another election in, in a couple of months. The interim government will cancel all national emergencies and return us back to constant. Yes, all national emergencies. Even, like, if you're, but we're in the middle of a hurricane. Ah, fuck that. Um, but there's floods, there's tornadoes all across the Midwest. Ah, fuck them. Um, there's... <laughs> Monitors elections and prevents illegal election activities of special interest of special interest groups. Illegal action, illegal action. Okay, all right. Like nurses, sure. Creates a new U.S. Treasury rainbow currency backed by gold, silver, and platinum. <laughs> yeah, let's let's have them. We don't need them. 
of money made from what our productivity and the worth of the human output in the country and make good stuff is. We want it based on pretty rocks. Oh, these are pretty rocks. Fucking the pretty rock crowd. Jesus. <laughs> uh, precious metals. Ending the bankruptcy of the United States initiated by Franklin Roosevelt and everything. Forbids the sale of American birth rec certificate records as chattel property bonds by the U.S. Department of Transportation. Well, I, I mean, way to head off a problem you didn't know you had. Initiates new U.S. Treasury bank system in alignment with constitutional law. Whatever. Eliminates the Federal Reserve System, of course. During the transition period, the Federal Reserve will be allowed to operate side by side the U.S. Treasury for one year in order to remove all fe federal treasury notes from the money supply. Yeah, this is six trillion dollars in currency throughout the world. Everybody, uh, the, it's the world's uh, currency. But we'll just wait till we can get them all and shred them. It'll take about a year. <laughs> Restores financial privacy. Well, of course, we all live the eBay economy. Who knows who pays for what in in Barter Town? Ain't we a pair, raggedy man? We don't need another hero. Just pig shit. We're going to pay for stuff in pig shit. You know, because it's real money. <laughs> Restrains all judges and attorneys in constitutional law. Again, whatever the fuck that means. <clears throat> Ceases all aggressive U.S. military actions worldwide. Define aggressive, fucko. Does it, by the way, does it also cease the aggressive actions by all the other world governments? Is, is Russia and China and Iran and, and Hamas, are they going to all suddenly get nice because we left? You know, because it's really just because we're there. If it wasn't for us, they would have all just been really nice. Ceases all, yeah. Establishes peace throughout the, oh, good. All right, well, I'm glad it has the ability to do that. With one executive order, get fucked. Can you imagine typing this? <laughs> Can you imagine as a grown person writing this down and going, yeah, fuck yeah. Fuck, this, is so, this is so gonna, wow. Yeah, oh, that's a good point. Where all the coins go, Annie Sarah. Yeah, people will be allowed to keep those for their physical use as, you know, for home gyms. <laughs> If you got, if you have like, uh, you know, two big water bottles, like you use uh, the giant water jugs filled with coins, you can stick them on the end of a pipe and make your own weights. Like you're an unbreakable. <laughs> Jesus Christ, these people are stupid. <laughs> Establishes peace throughout the world. Take that, Jesus. I mean, you come down here with your, all your magic powers. You weren't able to do it. Stroke of a pen, bitch. <laughs> Like, what are you talking about? Releases unprecedented prosperity with enormous sums of money for humanitarian purposes. From where? You just shredded it, dickhead. What? What? And by the way, define humanitarian purposes. <laughs> there, Because there's going to be people out there picketing about how you're using their uh, taxes only on brand new shit money to to pay for you know no oil for orgies <laughs> yes for for like truly exploring urine therapies after we cure cancer we will figure out how much we can make d refining urine for <laughs> all the great things it's used for <clears throat> Enables the release of over 6,000 patents of suppressed technologies that are being withheld from the public under the guise of national security, including free energy devices, anti-gravity, and sonic healing machines. Oh, yeah, that's, by the way, uh, <laughs> I'm for that. I, I don't know, honestly, <laughs> yeah, no orgies for oil. Depends on what kind of oil we're talking about. Uh, more oil for the center. Um, <laughs> yeah, they've been holding back anti-gravity. <laughs> Yes, the U.S. the U.S. Department of Defense has been has has had the ability to have anti gravity tanks, but they would ra rather supply diesel to tanks way out in in the distance than give that away. <laughs> oh, the med beds, right? Yeah, the med beds are what the QAnon folks think um, are are an existing technology. Um, <clears throat> where is it?
Really? Oh, this looks totally legit. <laughs> I don't know why it drives up. They're already on the market. There's several. You can get the Baxter 1000. <laughs> These don't look at all like shit the, that uh, the, uh, BTK would lay out on his bed before going out. <laughs> look at this shit. The Quantum. I want the Quantum 3000. Where does that go? It looks painful. This is hammer tech. I call it the ex-wife. <laughs> yeah, it's only $4,225 for all this stuff. But the blanket's nice. This one's cheaper, though. You don't get a lot of the other. This is the cool stuff. Let me just step up one grand. Med bed mass. This is just a fucking exercise chair. Anti-aging med bed. The telomere 4000, which looks... Interestingly, like the Quantum 3000, is there something else? Is it bigger aromatherapy bottles? Um, the Tesla healing machine. I, by the way, I saw these things in China. They sell these things in China, and the and there's a bunch of like Chinese medicine folks over there that sell this as next level tech. It doesn't cost this much though. They're like eighty dollars. <laughs> so. I mean, and can you imagine if the patents were released and you could do the really good ones? Is this on Etsy? No, <clears throat> I'm not going to say what um, dot com is like. Look at this. Just fucking AI crafted, you know, like just go to one of these. What is this video? Okay, he's in a massage chair. This is fucking spooky. Is he dead? Oh, he's got a... Oh, oh, of course. He's got a pyramid on his chest. He's got a... He's got a gold pyramid on his chest. <clears throat> that that should do it. And a mosquito net, which I think is crucial to the whole endeavor. <clears throat> oh, and the... Oh, I, see, I thought you'd be laying on top of that shit. It just needs to be nearby. Does it suck the stuff out of you and then send it... Is that how it, it like evaporates? It's kind of like a cooling unit, you know? It's like a heat sink for bad vibes. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it's no good without the mosquito net because it, it, the one thing it can't fix is malaria. Anyways, those are the med beds. The med, they actually think there's this big kind of like, you know, high, it, somewhere between an iron lung and the Luke Skywalker tank. <clears throat> Anti-gravity. And again... I don't want to ruin anybody's experience of um, Back to the Future, but in Back to the Future 2, when he's using the hoverboard, if they had that technology, there would be no more war in the world. None. Because you don't have to fight. Once you're not fighting friction, things get so goddamn cheap, so fast, um, that... Uh, I mean, even just the physical labor. You drive the population down by a billion people over time because people won't need a third hand to push a cart in the middle of, you know, a, a Jakarta market. Um, eliminates all current and future nuclear-powered weaponry on planet Earth. How? How does it eliminate the future shit? Like, I get how you could get rid of the current stuff. You could dismantle it, right? But you do realize that if you release these energy devices, the free energy devices and the anti-gravity and the sonic healing machines, that that gives people a lot of time and a lot of extra technology to, to create nuclear weapons in their home. I mean, there's a dude, uh, a man makes nuke in garage. <laughs> how hard is that shit? Yeah, David Hahn. The radioactive Boy Scout. Where's uh? Where's he? <clears throat> yeah, I'm just saying. <clears throat> I don't. I don't necessarily think uh, that that an executive order isn't is. I get how you can get rid of the government ones. <laughs> But I don't know how the executive order is going to stop shit like this. <laughs> Fucking Boy Scouts, man. Uh, 
my note. So now you can understand why they killed President Kennedy and why they're trying to stop President Trump from implementing Nassara in the new Republic of the United States and Jassara Worldwide with the gold back current reset announcement coming soon. This was April 8th, 2020. Soon, relatives, stand by. Nothing can stop this. Meanwhile, they're storming into Ralph's not wearing masks. This is the, but yeah, so this is the, this is, I don't know. It, this person who does, it, they're not new to this. They wrote all this shit out, but this is in the list of stuff. You did, If you found anybody talking about the Nashara Jasara shit, that's what they're, all right. <clears throat> Anyways, this is the, you know, doom first, pay later is the idea. So, yeah. The only thing that could stop it is reality, which seems to come crashing down on a lot of people. The same thing with the bottom of the fucking tech stocks. Do you honestly think that in... Think about this for a second. Of all the stocks that might take a shit over the next 10 years, do you think the technology sector is the one we're going to give up on? Also... Do you think maybe because the NASDAQ has a lot of these uh, that the technology sector might not be a one like a basket that fits all that there might be <laughs> might be a difference between Apple and Microsoft and Dell and uh, you know Facebook and their meta stuff and Twitter and uh, Getter, whatever. Um, I don't think they're on the stock market. Like Twitter, I think Rumble is. And um, Peloton and Lululemon's uh, adventurism into a mirror in your house that watches you while you work out, which is like, what the fuck are you talking about? You think that you think maybe there might be vacillation in the market based on the kind of shit that's in the NASDAQ? You think? Maybe? Might be a thought. I don't know. Might be like some... Th th there might be a lot of keepers and a lot of suckers in mixed in together. And you gotta kind of decide which one. Okay, so... Oh, and by the way, the two things we... The, the, um, the greater fool concept, which is you know a stock isn't worth... Or a real estate or whatever. You know an investment is not worth what you paid for it. But you're hoping some dumbass will come along who's even dumber than you, the greater fool, and will pay more for it eventually. That's the entirety of the Chinese real estate market currently. All of it. So, hi, Anita. See you later on Hauser Midas Touch. Nice. I'm gonna I I I'm hoping to be on Midas Touch's thing in a little, you know, in a few weeks or something. We'll see. <clears throat> Meanwhile, um, there's the greater fool and the clear out the suckers. And, and the greater fool is you own it and you're just, you're going to wait and just hang on to it until some dumbass comes along that's willing to pay for more than it's worth, even more than you paid for more than it's worth. And then there's the clear out the suckers guys, which are, um, stand back, stand back, stand back and try to buy the bottom of the dip. That's the, that's the angle, right? That's the, I mean, there's, and people vacillate between the two of those. Those two people don't give a rat's ass about the value of a company, what it brings what it, to its customers, what it gives to the world, what it actually pushes uh, you know, out into existence, how it changes lives for the better based on growth and technology and experience like you know like, like and, and I think the best example is like medical technology firms, companies that make medical devices, that are refining every year. They're getting better and better every year. They probably learned more about ventilator technology in the last year than they've learned in the last 30 because of the acute use cases, how to deal with them, um, where they failed, where they worked, the best ones for certain circumstances, right? And so all the companies that make those things are making better ventilators and they will make fewer ones and they will make higher quality and cheaper and fewer and smaller ones, right? So that they can maximize profit, but also 
make themselves the trusted brand because that's one of the other things nobody ever talks about when they talk, you know, especially on our side of the aisle when they start talking about, you know, corporate this and corporate that and da da da. da. There is something to be said for being the trusted brand. That that has value. Oh, thanks. I uh, I often will wear what would uh, be traditional uh, right wing symbology that I feel they have unfairly claimed for themselves and have no right to, um, just to annoy them, and because I actually do love my country. So instead of their fucking faux, their fake patriotism. That's right. I said it. So. Yes, you want to maximize profits, but if, but just like, I think, I think people on the left side of the equation talk about corporations and profits the way the right wing talks about social media and cancel culture. So like the, if you listen to all these people, by the way, who are still on Twitter for whatever reason, that Twitter wants to censor people and it'll kick people off and that's all they're doing and they're just becoming draconian and it's true censorship. Well, eventually, there's a there's a tipping point where if that were true, none of these social media networks would have the value they have as points of discourse and hangout. So they would lose it. They would The, the audience would go, oh, this fucking, you can't say anything here. I'm not even a bad person. I'm saying stuff and they're like, they're jumping down my throat. So they would leave. So the company has a balance that they carry out all the time that tries to mitigate and keep the number of like truly evil bad actors off the platform while letting a certain amount of crazy through so that there's a a generalized free movement on the site that you can appreciate and use and it's it doesn't feel constricting right so they're always doing that and if you can go if there's a site where you can talk about most things but they don't let the you know, stormfront racists or, you know, the, you know, jihadi beheadists post their videos and stuff. You're like, this is probably the best place to hang out without that shit, but you can have a full argument, right? That's what most social media is looking for because that's the widest audience. That's the widest customer base. That's the vast majority of people. And if you broom out the more psychotic ends of the, of the activist class spectrum right to left, they're understood, Michael, fear not. Um, then, then everybody else who's trying to get along and, and you know, go along can have a big conversation about even the most con- uncomfortable things. And that's what, you, that's what you have to do. But the right wing always says, all they give a shit about is censorship. Well, if that was true, they would actually go against their purpose of existence and they would eat up all their profits. They would kill off so much of their audience that they'd be essentially useless. And that's what's happened in the inverse on Parler and Getter and all these other places because instead of becoming a social media network, they started out as a corral and they want to stay that way. They are digital cul-de-sacs for the, a circle jerk of ideas. It's like a Reddit thread where it's just us, right? And it's antithetical to the idea of social media, but that's because they don't really want that. The folks that are complaining about this shit don't really want uh, the conversation they're talking about. They want to hide amongst people that... And and there's people uh, of all sorts that do that. But that's... Biden's a center-right, moderate Republican, folks? No, he isn't. Um, center-right moderate Republicans by 80s standards would be Democrats now, but that doesn't make Biden that. Um, and by the way, I, I'm glad, Zangari, that you think so highly of center-right moderate Republicans, whatever the fuck, because um, center-right, center-ish would make you moderate, I would think. Isn't that kind of the point? And centrist and moderate, kind of the similar, th- I don't know, whatever. Anyways, sort of an overlap. It's a, it's a doubling of it. Um, if you think centrist center right moderate republicans would add more diverse judges to um the the judicial system in our country um than any other president in history in a year um then uh i i i, I you have more faith in them than i do <laughs> i'm center right yeah yeah sure um the um no 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 just because you're off the deep end doesn't define anybody else. Lun- lunatics do not get to de- uh, de- define the same. doesn't work that way. Anyways, so the point I'm trying to make it is, um, 
is that in in this conversation about you know social the right wing and how they talk about social media, they kind of assume that control is the main reason for the existence of that. But if it was, it would obliterate the audience base that makes them the biggest ones. And it's the mindset that these assholes have that define social media to them, that that is about control, is how they they actually define their, their sites. When they build a site, they build it with how the mentality they have in mind. In the same way that Donald Trump... And, and the right always talk about Obama as, he, as, as if he was ruling like a dictator. He was acting like a king. He thought he was a king. We thought of him as a god or a messiah. We didn't look at him as a man, blah, blah, blah. And they would talk about that. And then the minute he got in office, he started acting like a dictator and wanting people to treat him like a god. Because it wasn't that he was against that. It was that he was jealous and he was projecting it. Right? And the same thing happens when they, they looked at these websites and like, this is all about control. This is all about censorship. This is all about, you know, they, all they want is the people to think one way. And then they go build a one way site and wonder why the audience is shit. Because the, it's, it's not a social media network. It's a corral. So uh, a lot of times people on the left will talk about corporations in terms of profit in, in similar ways. That profit is the only thing and maximizing profit is the only thing. Well, that's true, but if it's only your focus in the short term, the best way to do that is violent theft. But it doesn't pay off in the long term. If your goal is you know, constant growth of both the stock, like overseeing this and making as much money as you can on certain deals and all that kind of stuff, you have to maintain, your company can't cavern by being hideous uh, all the time, it's got to maintain some level of acceptance, you know, and, and growth in that. And so alongside most companies, and there's certainly like the, I mean, we're not talking about Enron and all that shit, um, which is a good example of maximizing profit, but not giving a goddamn. Um, when you've got uh, like, Apple or any any of the larger pharmaceutical companies or whatever, what they need to continue to be viable. If they were a monopoly, it'd be a different thing. But there's, you know, between Moderna, you know, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, they've got a genuine competition between these four giant companies. And even their subsidiaries have, uh, you know, competition between each other. And so because there's four giants in this, you know, in this field, and there are others, Abbott and others that, you know, are by, are nipping at their heels, keeping them honest all the time, that what they want to be is the trusted brand. Because if you're going to buy, if they all make a ventilator, to use this analogy, if Abbott makes a ventilator and Johnson Johnson puts out a ventilator and, and they're all using the same science of humans and their own testing or whatever, the one that works the best, lasts the longest, is the cheapest and functions the best, is going to be the one that everybody buys. And so that value added has to is crucial to uh to your existence and acting like it doesn't is is absurd um what lefty policies biden's were name a lefty policy zangari you what lefty policies do you support um student loan debt forgiveness so we're gonna pay off uh um Everybody who got two hundred thousand dollars to go to law school and now works for a hedge fund, we're gonna the taxpayer is gonna pay that off. No means testing, nothing. Is that lefty, or is that socialism for the rich? Because helping a few poor people pay off their thirty, forty thousand dollar nursing school loans versus paying off somebody's $250,000 legal loan while they go work at a giant corporation that they absolutely could afford to pay off on their own and that they took on themselves, if you're going to wipe it all out, you're going to wipe out way more rich people debt than you are poor people. $15 minimum wage? Do, you do realize... <laughs> you do realize that... Um, He's advocating for the a federal $15 minimum wage, has been. Can't make it happen with a stroke of a pen, but um, you know what he just did, or do you even give a fuck? Um, 
Do you, do you even know that he did this? Hold on. Do you even know? Do you even care? Do you give him credit? College is, is is subsidized free in most places. It's different than university. College and university are different, especially in the European system. We subsidize most trade school in this country. Do you re- I mean, can he do it? No. Should be at least twenty two fifty. That's just above poverty. Yeah, but that's not the baseline. It's not, it's not the point. He j- Literally, you're asking for it, and he did it already to the extent that he can. 15 isn't enough. Well, then don't ask for 15. Ask for 25. You asked for it. You asked me. What's he for? I said, what are you for? You said $15 minimum wage. Now you're just retyping shit, Zangari. This is all this is all cut and paste now. Lame. Try harder. No union subsidized trade schools with government support. There you go. Anyways, point being is that. Um, th- this fits into the doomsayer idea that I talk about. That if and, and this is where the phrase uh, "progressives hate progress" has been circulating lately, unfortunately, because you anytime something moves forward, it's considered kind of. It, it's not only that it's good. Well, we did that. Now let's keep moving forward. Let's keep making progress. It's that fuck that that was dumb anyways is terrible. So nobody would get into a legit. Um, deal with someone like that nobody would you're not arguing in good faith for what you want you're not um no there are no concessions for any progress made so there you go it's okay yeah i know he does but it's good to cover some of the other folks that show up in here but i but it helped me make the point too is this you know this idea that um going back to our conversation about um, you know, the stock market and wages and all that kind of stuff insofar as how the United States is doing versus anybody else. Um, let's see. Um, uh, um, let's see if I can find a better picture of this. Um, so, um, one, you know, one of the ways, like, can you imagine Hal's lawyer would be like Robert Downey Jr. the judge? <laughs> That's nice. My, my girl and I love that movie. Remember when Bernie turned the massive fanaticism was called against DJT after Hillary was DJ down there? Oh, that's right. He never did. That's true. Well, because it wasn't about winning. It wasn't actually about because you can't acknowledge. Um. You you know you can't acknowledge uh, victory because it feels like you're um, you're letting up. And if you've told everybody, if you've told your followers forever that the end is nigh if we don't fix this, then there's never a point where you can go, hey, oh, this was good. Ever. I mean, there's tons of areas. I posted this thing about, uh, like, progress that's being made on climate because it's true. Um... There we go. Hold on. Okay, here you go. So, um, 
This is the pre-Paris Climate Accord pathway. And by the way, we're back in that and we never really left. <laughs> We've been transitioning to natural gas away from coal and we're move, we'll move towards nuclear, wind, and solar as our primary ways of generating energy. And, and natural gas is a transitional thing. And we're trying to get the rest of Europe to transition away from coal to natural gas. And that's how it will work. Uh, thanks, Benjamin. <laughs> um, but this is where we were headed. And then, thanks to rapid growth and clean energy, this is where we're headed. Now it's still still got a ways to go. We still have work to do. This is what we're shooting for. And this is and this will be though. This is what is needed, right? This little guy right here. I don't know why their chart is too small. Maybe it's oh, I have to shrink it down. There it is. The 1.5C pathway. Right. This is the this is the idea down here. Um this by the way does not um the reason they pledge this pathway um to get to here is because Things like that volcano that erupted near Tonga releases stuff into the atmosphere that contributes to uh, atmospheric cooling. So, and they count on a certain number of those things happening on schedule as they do. It's your, throw, uh, it's your throwing away incremental progress point, again, expressed in a different way. Totally. Well, because, yeah, you can't, you can't recognize incremental progress if you're constantly in a panic. And there have been, there's, this is, where we are, this is where we were, this is where we are, this is where we're going, this is where we'll get. And we're going to. Sorry. I'm sorry the end of the world is not coming. I'm sorry you're going to have to spend the rest of your life getting along with people, recognizing your worth in the world, trying to contribute, trying to be a worthwhile citizen. Trying to make the world better for people more than just you individually in this moment and how you feel. You don't have to have kids, but a lot of you are gonna. You can be annoyed at other people's kids. Those people with kids don't give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's, a, um, there's an interesting thing about plastic uh, too, Foggy. Is that um, the the the, uh, the advanced world is moving towards you know cellulose based plastics, and has made a lot of advances in that area. And the um, the oil based plastics versus the gas based plastics, which in the United States we'll be making them from from the remnants of gas um, mining and and uh, and extracting versus oil. And it's a less messy process environmentally, but eventually the cellulose-based stuff will be even less messy. The problem is, um, uh, yeah, the the plant-based plastics will decay faster. The problem is they don't sit as water bottles, for example, made out of the stuff don't last. So after a few weeks, they'll break down. And when you're making bottles of water for the world. You know, and you're and you're going, yeah, most water in bottles is consumed in the United States in a short order, within a few days. Yes, but if you're packing these bottles up and you're sending them out in the middle of sub-Saharan Africa, they got to be able to sit, even though sitting in plastic bottles in the sun is a terrible thing. It's better than dying of dehydration. It's got to last longer than that. And so we're still on that mechanical scale for storage of foodstuffs and that kind of things. Um, we're finding microplastics at both poles. Yes, we're going to find that too. And and again, the uh, that's a bigger deal uh, for our recognition of it than it, it like with us seeing it versus any of the major health concerns. It exists as part of our environment. There's lots of other stuff that's folded into our existence after Mount St. Helens erupted. It, we're fine. We found ash at both poles. Like that's part of it. Uh, and and oh oh, and this is good too. Um, um, there we go. 
This is from 2019, by the way. This has been going on for a while. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch Cleanup is underway, finally. This was in 2019. It's working. The giant Pacific Garbage Patch Cleanup is finally underway. Ocean Cleanup System is now finally catching plastic from one-ton ghost nets to tiny micro microplastics. Uh, the Dutch inventor and university dropout of created the Ocean Cleanup Project tweeted on Wednesday. His cleanup uh, system failed in the late December when a 60-foot length of the device broke off. They fixed it again, necessitating the towing of the 2,000-foot device back to Hawaii for the te for testing inspection. There you go, though. This is now happening. And they're, and they're, and a bunch of other boats have joined in. Um, this is the garbage patch they're going at. It's twice the size of Texas, this whole thing. In case you missed it, it's a short recap of our announcement today. So there, this is the small pilot program that was in 2019. Let's see. Hold on one second. Go back to here. Um, let's see. I'll just do the... <coughs> Um, there we go. Clean up the two milestones. Um, system of one. Yeah, here you go. And this is a couple years later. This is in warp news. There you go. Huge success for ocean cleanup. The test of the ocean cleanup newest and largest system turns out successful and hauls in massive amount of plastic. And other countries are jumping in and part of the Paris Accord was funding this thing to expand it with more boats. Thought about inventing drone-like scuppers that skim the surface like a saltwater filtration system. That's not a bad idea. Unpopular opinion. If Bernie were president, there would be a stalemate from both parties and nothing would get done. It, it, no, it'd be far worse than that. Um, nano and micro in the Arctic. Yes, but at a certain point, they break down so small that they are comparable to every other piece of uh, biological noise we experience. And again, there, this, this part of this cleans up microplastics. So does the environment. There's bacteria that eats microplastics. Finding it is not, you know, the the an asteroid hitting the Earth. I'm just trying to tell you that there is progress being made. This is look at all this shit they've scooped up, and they are going to continue to do it for years and years and years and years and years. They're not stopping. That was the that was the beginning of this too. Many have doubts about trash catching barriers and believe they might do har more harm than good. The problem is, however, the longer plastic waste remains in the water, the more garbage breaks down. In doing so, it is turning into microplastics very problematic since the tiny particles spread throughout all the ecosystems. Thanks to the new garbage catching system, a future with a cleaner, healthier ocean might come sooner. And that's, I mean, this is 2021. This is as they've expanded it. And again, there's more news going, or, I'm sorry, more money going to this because of the Paris Accord. Yeah. It's good. Are we there yet? No. But you have to at some point go, there was pressure to do this. Somebody took initiative, created a pilot program, and now it's expanding and governments all over the world are doing this. U.S. threatens use of novel export control to damage Russia's strategic industries if Moscow invades Ukraine. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, we're going to do, it's all going to be monetary, which is the only thing they give a shit about. You think, sorry, you think Putin gives a shit about his soldiers? I mean, they don't have that many. They've got a demographic problem that's fucked up. Um, I wish I wish I had my phone here. Um, let's see. Uh, Russia demographics. Let's see if there's a images. Yeah, here we go. Let's see, where's the... 2018, 2020. Yeah. So here's a pop, pop quiz. Are in most situations, are soldiers in a country young or old in general? If you have a lot of young people, do you have more soldiers than if you have a lot of old people? 
if you have a lot more old people than you have young people, are those young people busy getting being soldiers or are they busy trying to make a living to pay for the retirement of the old people? What are they doing? This is the Russian demographics currently. This is 2020 data. They just found, so did China, 8 million 10-year-olds, which is bullshit. They just made up the number because they looked at their real numbers and freaked the fuck out. Um, this is female. This is male. This is uh, people in the age range from 34 to 65, 69. This, is, this group's growing old over the next 20 years, and they are being followed up by a group that is almost, in some cases, half their size. This, this is, uh, that's a collapsing economy waiting to happen. It's a low military base to pull from. If you're going to have young people fighting in the military, right? You're a mess if this is your demographics. I'll show you what the what America looks like. Keep this in mind. Keep this image in mind, by the way. See this? See this outline? Look how big it gets. And then it shrinks down. Okay. So, let's see. Uh, let's see. China's. Now, China had the one-child policy, right? And there you go. And that was a mistake. So they're trying to force everybody to have three kids right now, and it's not working. Um, what are you talking about, Nevitz? No, I'm not. I'm talking about genuine progress. The fantasy is that nobody's doing anything and it's going to end in gloom and doom. There's, a, I mean, that's that's as much a fantasy. Here's the Chinese demographics. The average Chinese person is older than the average American right now. And China has just entered a phase where they're trying to transit from a an export economy to a consumption economy. Not, not my plan for them, their plan for them. They are isolating and they are making it all about their people. Yeah, Italy is another great example of it. But Italy is surrounded by Europe and they don't have a problem having sex with other people so from other countries. So they're, I mean, while Italian demographics might be what they are, the European ones are a little more fungible. But this is a this is a, a, a you know a movement by the government to not only shape the size on purpose of their populace, but also to make it more Han Chinese than any other kind of Chinese. So yeah, it's the WeChat. Yeah, they're going to the WeChat economy, right? Look look at the bottom of that. That's not good. That's fucked. If you're because. And, and I don't know if you guys know this, but in America, we get more years of free education than they get in China. We get 12, they get nine. They only pay for, they only, they only pay for nine years of school. We get 12 plus two. So this is, this is the current demographic. This is a, this is a time bomb. And the extra um, men in this chart over here, this little extra thing, that's because it's the size of the Chinese, um, you know, the, the demography of China as opposed to a smaller country like Italy or something like that. That's tens of millions of men over time that are not going to have mates. which is going to contribute to even more of this. And because it's a, it's very much a patriarchal and, you know, kind of, I mean, patriarchal is too easy a word for it, but, it, you know, the, the denigration of women in a big chunk of the society is so extreme that a lot of the women aren't wanting to pair up either. Why would you line up to get treated like that? 
especially if, if you're making more money. If you're getting, you know, the, well, uh, the further you get up, everybody knows that the more money people get, the more educated they get. They have fewer children dem because the children are not your uh, retirement plan anymore. Your own investments are, your own, whatever your, you know, your business is, whatever. That's how you're going to pay for it after you stop working, right? <laughs> nice work, John. <coughs> um, so it's going to get even worse. It's imbalanced and it's going to get even worse. Yes, boys do kill each other more, so that does that will work it out. But that's not really good uh, for your stability of your country. Okay, this is bad, and and people in this age range from like thirty to like fifteen, that's who buys all the shit. They have their own money for the first time, either because they're earning it or because their parents are giving it to spend themselves at fifteen years old, all the way up to when you're thirty. That's when you're buying more cars, more stuff, TVs, shit like that. As you get older, you start purging that stuff. You keep what you have. You, you know, a lot of the stuff lasts. A lot of modern stuff, even people who turn stuff over, you know, if you buy a Prius, it's going to last 20 years. So that's another Prius that doesn't need to be made, you know, built. It can be bought secondhand, you know, two, three times. So this is, you know, when this window of people buying shit for their sales tax to pay for these folks, which is are, are going are aging rapidly. Ask Japan how that worked out. Let's see if we can find like uh, Japan. Japan's in rough in a rough spot for that very reason. Look at this. Woof, and everybody's been talking about this. Right? This is one of the reasons why Japan has troubles. Why they're automating faster than any society. Because there's no kids to work at jobs. Everything's a goddamn vending machine. Because <laughs> who are you going to put in there to do it? So this is... Uh, all right. Now. Look at here. Let's see if I can find one that's closer. Look at this. Now, there's a taper here, but it's, it's not a big deal. And it flares out. Um, um, you know, Americans, look at this. The millennials are a bigger generation than the boomers. So, there, this Gen X right here, this is my generation. We're a slight taper. And then we ballooned out because we wanted to have kids. We liked the idea of being parents. There was a lot of conversation about being a good parent and being great to your kids and raising them in a loving household and how blah, blah, blah. So we had a bunch of kids. And here they are. These kids have not yet started having kids. They're waiting a little longer. But that doesn't mean they aren't. And this is flaring out again too. Look at that. It's already started. Look how wide base that is compared to what we were just looking at. America is fine. We could be, we, we could, I'm sorry, but we could be completely isolated from the world and have a, you know, a, a normal growth economy for the next 30 years. So, yeah, the fat pagoda. <laughs> That's what we are. But again, look look at this demographic. Look at this. The millennials, the uh, Gen Xers had more kids than their parents did. And the millennials, because there's more of them, even if they have fewer kids, are still having more kids than the Gen X generation. The 90s and 80s kids who bought a bunch of toys and played a bunch of video games and ran around and changed their clothes every three years. Right? This is, and, and by the way, the United States is the only country that looks like this right now.
Boom, boom, boom. Down, down, down. UK is, by the way, because it incorporates England, Scotland, and, and Ireland in their demographic counting, is, is there's a lot of variables in that. There's a worse tightening in England proper, but in Scotland and Ireland, there's more kids, obviously. Kids are all kids have always been expensive, but they're absolutely worth it. And by the way, expensive is de determined by what you get out of something, not what it costs. Um, let's say, uh, let's look at, I don't know, pick a country, Germany. Jesus Christ. There you go. Wait, let me see that. Here, yeah. That's, that's, that's 2016. Hold on, let me find the 2020. 2017, it's not getting any better. Yeah, here you go. Germany, 2021. Look at that. How may I point out that all the things you talk about are things that ch choices consumers make all by themselves? Yes, but by volume, um, some you might have a giant population explosion of people who don't buy anything. That's possible, but it rarely happens because there's a window of maturity that everybody passes through. That's why there's no such thing as the youth vote. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. Yeah, there's no such thing as the youth vote. You can't court the youth vote. You know why? Because by the next election, they're not the youth anymore. They've got their college degree. They've changed their mind. They've either gotten married or decided to fuck off from the process entirely. And they're wandering through their late 20s trying to decide who they are. So they're not reliable. Till they're about 36. And yet everybody's like, we got to figure out how to get the youth to vote. Like the youth this year is the same as the youth four years from now. Oh, by the way, you're watching the House Sparks Mornings Mega Worldwide Sideshow. Sometimes I just get off on a tangent and we just got to ride through this. Yes, I am, Benjamin. <laughs> yeah, the UK should not copy the United States. Uh, by the way, UK, um, uh, just stop trying to be the United States. Stop trying to be the like the immigrant capital of the world. You can't do it. You don't have the societal structure to handle it. We do. Just stick to being British. Boil your meats. You know, eat a lot of, you know, bread without anything on it. <laughs> go back to eating shitty food and having bad teeth. It's way more fun to visit when you go to England and it's full of Brits. You're a tourist destination. You're fascinating. You're, you're a monarchy, so stop trying to pretend you're a democracy. It's silly. Just go back to being a monarchy. It's <laughs> just full on. Quit it. And stop sending royals over here and, pretend, and, and expecting me to give a fuck. But look at Germany's population, kids. Look at that. Jesus Christ. You cannot pay for a social safety net for these folks that are going to age up into here and these folks, which because it's Germany, are going to live a lot longer. They're going to get up into here. This number doesn't, this, this one does not taper as fast as other countries. Look at this plateau right here. That's the other thing. People living longer, older after retirement. And their social safety net is based on a date, not on a reality. It's not based on whether or not you can work. It's based on, ow, 65. I don't want to do this anymore. A lot of fucking old Germans. Exactly. This whole area is tapering. Oh, Latin America is not much better. Here, look. You want to see? Hold on. Brazil. And like... Well, boom. When is this one? That's 2017. Let me find 2020. 2018. There you go. Now, they die quicker than anyone. Like, you don't live long in Brazil. This is what short lifespan looks like. Where you average out. Where you balloon around this age. And then, if you make it to 55, you're on a like a quick taper. The odds are you're not going to get much further. Like, the, look at the size of that. Every, everybody else's taper is a lot wider. That's what you want for your society? 
I mean, ultimately, we'd want it to be like this and we'd be fine. Or this, I suppose. But if it's like the sharper that is, the worse the environment is for people. Canada's in trouble too. Mexico isn't. Mexico is a little better, I think. Hold on. I think so. Let's look at Mexico. They're very young. Yeah, look at that. Look at that, Mexico. Look at you guys. Look at you baby-making psychopaths. Cranking them out. Only other, only other country besides the U.S. and Mexico were doing just fine in this. You don't want to see Canada, Tim. And again, this is a consumption society. This is a society that's buying a lot of shit, doing a lot of things. They're going to want to travel. They're going to want to come to the United States. They're Texas's biggest trading partner. Fuck you, Texas, and your nonsense about the border. You trade more with uh, Mexico than any than all the other states combined. Hal gets upset if you don't like America. No, I don't care if you don't like America. I happen to love America. I don't get upset if you don't like America. I get upset if you pretend to like America and you shit on it all the time. That's the right wing thing. It's more about the hypocrisy of the, the entire thing. Yeah, uh, Canada, not so much. There you go. Who's the nearest one? There's 2018. There you go. 2020. Boop, boop. A lot of social programs, Canada. And you can't pay for social programs with a taper like that. So your taxes have to go up because you're taxing an even smaller group. Right? Now, there's a lot of problems with some of these demographics like Russia and China and other places because you can't get an honest answer and they pad the bottom. So the you can assume that like this taper, this is a legit number. Canada has no reason to lie. This is really who's there. This is their, you know, their census. It's genuine. But the Russian and Chinese census looks far worse in reality. Yeah. That's why immigrants, partly, it's, it's more why automation, but that's another thing entirely. Um, and again, um, also, uh, for a good long while, Canada leaned female, balanced out about here, and now it's sort of even Steven. It's, it's like you guys have, are, are sex selecting in your pregnancies. It's, it's pretty amazingly symmetrical. Um, meanwhile, let's see. Uh, what's a good like? Uh, we'll look at France. France is, uh, yeah, let's see. 20, give me 2020, uh, 2014, 2017. Yeah, live France population clock. Okay, so theirs is less of a taper. They just have this balloon out here. So France, as far as it's, what it can take in as a society. So if you're going to vacation in a country and it's going to be relatively stable and all that kind of stuff in about 10 years, it's going to be France, not Germany. Yeah. Yes, Hal, but Canada's pro-immigration hoping it will help. It won't. Yeah, Cuba is a different thing. Getting Cuba's demographics is really hard. I don't know that I trust them either, but it's not good. <coughs> yeah, here you go. This is that's 2018. They're facing the same problem. And the only way out for them, there you go, population clock. So this is when the this is the height of sort of the communist boom as far as age goes. And then ba boom. Look at that death rate. That drop rate. These none of these people had kids. Boom. And then they had a few more, and then... And again, this just might be a reporting issue. When you get a hard line like that, they're just bullshitting you, maybe. But Cuba, the only way Cuba's going to survive and not turn into, um, like, starve itself to death is to, is to normalize relations with the, with the United States and other countries and and turn into a consumer base because their population is not going to be able to pay for the social programs that they want. So they're going to have to have more people doing it. And the way you do that is either you let people immigrate like other people were talking about or tourism. Let people come in, pay taxes and buy shit and do all kinds of things and then leave. 
And then the money they leave behind, you pay for your aging population. Yeah, Italy is having the same problem. Now, keep in mind, uh, think about what I've shown you. So all of three countries that I've shown you have a mild taper or none at all. Everybody else, like amazing drop off. And now think back to the stories you heard about the world was going to be overpopulated. Right? Think about that for a second. Think about what you heard about overpopulation. What was the storyline in 2002 you heard? Or 1995? Right? What was... Yeah, Obama tried with Cuba, Trump derailed it, Biden will bring it back probably year two. Yeah, oh my God. All you ever heard was that we're doomed, right? We're, we're overrun. We're going to be, there's going to be 20 billion people, 20, you know, 20 billion people by 2030. And now what's the biggest thing that people are struggling with? In all these countries, people stop making babies and they don't have enough people to pay for the social programs for the older people as they age because nobody had kids. Because worldwide, both through, uh, you know, media awareness in, you know, in, in the Western world, in the first world countries across the border, uh, you know, including China, I guess, in some ways, oh my God, population's a problem. We got to do something about population. And so we did. And everybody listened. People stopped having kids all over the fucking place. Except like three places. <laughs> right? And now a bunch of countries are running out of people. Right? Well, I mean, the, and it wasn't because they did some sort of giant depopulation scheme. People just like, well, yes, India definitely has issues though. But of course, their numbers aren't completely viable either. And they have, let's see, uh, let me look over there real quick. Because that's one of the big places in India demographics. Here we go. Yeah. This is uh, demographics. Now well, that's 2001. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll show you something. Oh, dear God. So 2001, what's the conversation happening about India? Oh, my God. Look at the population of India. Look what's happening. Oh, dear Lord. Right? The idea being that that, go, that pyramid goes out and then it goes thunk. Or it keeps going, right? Just in the number of millions, right? That that thing just keep expanding out. Holy shit. So in 2001, you're looking at the population of India. And you're going, oh dear Lord, where are we going to put all these Indian people? There's not even enough people there. And now fast forward to, let's see, here's 2020. Look what happened. Brrr. Starting its taper. And the reason for the expansion, this is what happens when you introduce goods and services and stuff to a country that never had them before. Over the course of a couple of decades. That's what you're going to get. Food, resources, contact, people. You, like They didn't have telephone lines through a lot of the country, but cell service popped up like that. In a matter of two years, you could get a cell phone signal almost anywhere in India. And all of a sudden, like, we're starving is way easier to do than walking for miles to tell someone. And the responsive world comes in and says, oh, so shit, they're starving. And they start doing it. Yes, and their doubling was smaller than China. That's true. <coughs> their taper is going to be longer because Indian people live longer in general. If they, if they didn't kill each other or engage in gnarly shit later, they would live way longer. This, this number would stay pr fairly constant which would be even rougher because you'd need even more kids below. But they've already started their taper and that's going to continue. They know this. They've already been addressing this. It went from here, look at this, boom, to there. 
Here's the population of India versus the population of China, meanwhile. Look at that demographic. You wonder why uh, China's trying to take over Tibet to get all the water out of there before they're outnumbered? P.S. China's uh, population numbers are bullshit. Well, it is Walmart foggy. I'm sorry, Auntie. You can adopt, I guess. <laughs> right? Right? Look at this. Look at India versus China. You wonder why China's freaking the fuck out? That is, India is their primary competitor in the world, not the United States. Because they're looking to isolate their economy. They're not going to be part of the world economy the way we are. We get along with people. They don't. India wants to be. India wants to be a part of the world economy. India is moving that direction. But holy hell. Look at, uh, right, Bina? Look at the Chinese taper compared to the, the Indian growth. And by the way, the Chinese numbers are padded. The Indian numbers are not. The Indian numbers might even be overestimating because they do headcount kind of census in a lot of places. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, we have we can look at Taiwan. Yeah, see, they're they're the same kind of situation too. They got a huge taper, but they're a smaller island nation. It's not so much a problem for them because their social programs. There you go. Let's see. File Taiwan. When is this? I need to find the, this is the 2060 idea, Taiwan population pyramid 1950 to 2019. Yeah, so they're narrowing down. Now, the, here's the interesting part about Taiwan, though. Yes, they have this balloon that's very much like the, it looks like the South Korean model. It looks like the Japanese model. It's how those societies are aging, right? They ballooned as they entered the world, and then as they start sort of Going, okay, we'll keep this stuff for ourselves. Okay, Apex was 1993. Yeah. The introduction when China's, you know, kind of let them. Yeah. Oh, that's 2050. That's it. Here's 2020. There we go. Yeah. So that's a, that's a fucking taper. That's a problem. Now, <coughs> population uh, in millions as by age group. They are not having enough kids in this. And as these people age out and croak... And they live long. That's why, too. They have an aging population, but they keep working and they keep moving. And so they don't retire at 65. So they have three more years of productive life before they enter this. And then it's a fairly quick drop-off. It's interesting as far as the age demographic. Look at that pyramid right there. But this is this is 1993 introduction of, you know, China opening up, therefore Taiwan crossing over, blah, blah, blah. Russia is a strong leader. Russia's Got a dipshit criminal running the place. Um, so they're down, you know, this is the smaller thing. The, the issue, though, they have is that the Taiwanese don't need a giant population for their country to run well. They This is, this is sort of excess population for them. Right? They don't need it for the businesses they have. They don't, they, you know, this is a lot of, this, even as busy as they are, there's a lot of stragglers. And these folks leave the country, too. There's a big bunch of folks that leave. So, and and will continue to do so as Taiwan becomes a bigger uh, partner to the world and, uh, and you know, and China drops off. Yeah. So, but this is, yeah, this is, they're, they're having very few kids. But again, it's a small island. It's not that big a deal. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, a great country. If you ever get a chance to go to Taiwan, when this bullshit isn't going on, I highly recommend it. It's lovely. Taipei, I've been in Taipei 101. I've been uh, on the their high-speed rail. It's fantastic. Through Taichung into Tainan. I've been down to the Formosa um, uh, tea fields. And it's just lovely. The the, the washer, the, the um, night markets are awesome. It's just, I love Taiwan. It's super good. It's a great country. Good people. Really fun. In the past, my grandmother moved back and died. In, oh, see, Shui. Oh, in uh, that's fascinating. 
Yeah, the Kunting Night Market. Africa is a different thing. So Africa is not a country. It's a continent. And there's a lot of shit going on there. Um, and let's see. That's 2012. Yeah. So look at this. East and Southeast Asia. West Africa. It's, it's hard to plot these out. Okay, this is the 2020. Yeah, here you go. So if you looked at where it was going here, you're like, oh my God, all it's doing is expanding. And it certainly did. And then whoop, it dropped down. And then whoop, it dropped down. Now, the difference is, is that this is a con this is continental populace, right? This is just volume of people. And even still, it's, you know, it's going through its fluctuations. And a lot of it, this is just tracking data. At this point, this is just counting people. Yeah, there's, uh, let's see, that's not, like, here's Nigeria in 2020. Like, oh my God, look how fast it's growing. Well, <laughs> a lot of that has to do with counting people. Look at the demographics of Bahrain. What the fuck is going on there? This is the male surplus in Bahrain. This is the balance of male, female. This is the excess men in Bahrain. Whoa, look at Cutter. Holy shit. That's the Cutter Population Pyramid. Holy God. This, look at this. Looks like a duck. Looks like a, anybody who ever played um, the, the original um, Dungeons & Dragons Atari game? <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Like, uh, like, um, let's see. This is African population groups. Um, this is the yeah. So population is the fifteen to sixty four year olds are the biggest group. That's usually true, anyways. Um, sixty five plus is way down here. And zero to fourteen is way down here. So they're look at this. So they're expecting growth in Africa till like, you know, for this mid range here. But like, children, this is in, th in thousands for the whole country, and 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 a rise in a, a lowering in in birth rate, but a rise in aging volume but even still this is really low and this is where we really are right now this is you know this is if everything goes well so if you can keep you know disease from ravaging certain parts of it yeah this is, so they're expecting there was a spike at 2010 and then it looks like they're expecting kind of this taper where africa uh, in in Asia, which is what's happening, like the Chinese demographic, and then Africa being the biggest growth in people over time. Largely, if you're getting things like malaria and HIV under control, just by volume of human beings. Even still, that's not a lot of people in a lot of land. I mean, it's enormous, like the population centers where most of the people are. Yeah. Where they're like, by 2030, Africa will have 17 cities with more than 5 million inhabitants. That's a continent. Like, I mean, that, that means it would take Africa till 2030 to get where North America is now? Shouldn't China look like a duck? Yeah. What's my show age demos? Uh, um, you guys skew older. You definitely do. I don't know what the morning show demo is. It hasn't been going long enough to get a real read. Um, yeah, I'll give you, you know, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Elon Musk has 50 kids with 20 women. Amber Heard wanted none of it. For real? Well, no wonder he works all the time. <laughs> it's expensive. United States and South Africa were both built on the backs of poor people. What?
We, I mean, we don't have a fiefdom here. <laughs> Hold on. This, uh, it's Greg Kelly videos from uh, a couple of days ago. Yeah, uh, everywhere it was, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a middle-aged spread. Okay. Yeah, this is amazing. South African demographics. Yeah. What's this one? This is, a, this is black. That's interesting. Indian Asian. White. Literally a demographic called colored. In and amongst that. Because they have all these derivations in Africa. What they call people. Which is fascinating. I love how the right wing always says there's like. Apparently it's okay to call people people of color. But not colored people. And they seem to be confused. That people of color is a definition based on what you are. Colored makes it sound like you should have been or were something else and then you were changed. And the, the word itself, in the United States anyways, has a lot of background in, in groups like uh, the Mormons and others that, that said that, you know, in the war of heaven, black people fought on the wrong side and therefore God changed their color before sending them to earth so you knew they were bad people. Like, that's where that idea of color came from so that's why it's considered bad yeah besides they were born that way so not colored people love color makes way more sense but they seem to make this like oh my god you know you can say it one way but you can't say other way you know Gandhi was in South Africa, I think. I, he was. He moved around a lot. He, he was in India when he went down to the water, I think. So, um, anyways, so in terms of, I don't know, maybe there's an EU demographics too. Hey, there you go. Now, there we go. That This points to something fascinating. That's 2016. Um, and again, this is other country shit. European Union, that's 2004. 2020. I just got to put it in the, like, I don't know, to the last big read on this population figures group, 1990 to 2019. Yeah. So, um, what's the blue? Oh, 1990, this is 2019. So it's smaller than it was. All right. That's not helping me. Same thing here. 2019 to 2015. There's a drop off, but it's uneven because like the Polish are having kids and the the Slavic people are having kids, like the um, um, Slovenians are having kids. They're a small country, but they'll expand, yada, yada, while, while the Germans aren't, that kind of thing. So as far as Europe, there's a lot of different colors. Spanish are having kids. Um, yeah, let's see the Spanish. Yes. Yeah, look at that. Whew. See an arrowhead. Spaniards, get on that. You guys got to start making some kids, apparently. Because that's a lot. When these people retire, top end of this is 50, uh, 50 to 54. These fuckers retire right like in, in five years. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm way over time. I stayed on. Like, I get, I get into this stuff, and it's just fascinating to me, man. I just love talking about this. It's a great conversation, and it also, I think, it's you know, partly a perspective you don't necessarily see in context, because I think so much of our discourse right now is completely sans context. We did Mexico earlier, Didi. They're they're fine. Their demographics are fine. As a matter of fact, it's the best in North America. Um, do I need to vacation in Spain now? Yeah, you're gonna want to do it now. You don't want to wait because it's gonna be shitty. But when they talk about like America's doomed and the rest of the world and Europe's gonna eat our lunch and Russia's gonna do this and China 
China's gonna with their thing. Oh my God. Do we have uh, let's see. Uh, one last thing? So China has two super carriers, right? Battle carriers. Uh, and both of them are both of them are based on a are stolen from a Russian design. I'll leave you with this. This is for the China's going to eat our lunch crowd, uh, which I, I I just love this. I'm okay. So we have eleven super carriers, and uh, eleven, all of them just kitted out like fucking crazy. Have been forever. We're and and we're, there's there's an order for more and da 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 da. And ours are nuclear powered and can travel um, for, you know, all the way around the world. Uh, the Chinese ones are diesel powered and can only go 500 miles from shore without being refueled. There's only two of them. And one of them is a hotel. The super carriers are 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 yeah are diesel. The regular carriers are coal. <laughs> they have two, half of them. Yes, are empty hotels where no one is staying. By the way, <laughs> it's not like a retired one. They couldn't get it to work. So they parked it and you can stay in it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, come on. <laughs> yes, I'm serious. They have two. This is one of them. And it and they recommissioned it recently because they were going to use it again. They're building a new one. It has not launched yet. It's a copy of one of ours. It's about 20 feet shorter than ours. But it doesn't have the right pulley system. It's got the wrong elevators. They can't get it's silly. It's a riverboat. Yes, it was. It's a riverboat. It's riverboat gambling with a giant <laughs> aircraft carrier. Now they have, uh, anyways, we'll just lend it because I can get into a whole conversation about that. But just remember that for the whole, like, they're eating our lunch stuff. They have two. One used to be a hotel. Also, ghost cities. Also, uh, um, Evergrande, 29 billion, demolish. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I was off by 10. I thought it was 29 buildings. My mistake. Thirty-nine buildings. And we thought that Evergrande was the worst. Uh like of of the mortgage backed developers that was failing <laughs> no country garden i mean this isn't even the worst of it imagine just again anytime somebody's floating the whole china's gonna eat our lunch we're doomed thing imagine if you will if a developer that was half owned by the government had to demolish 29 giant apartment buildings, 20-story buildings minimum, 39, sorry, I keep doing that, 39 of them, almost 40 fucking buildings. Imagine if the U.S. government was half investor in a, in a, in a development like this and they just got an order to, to fucking knock them down. Just bomb them. Just, they're just pulling the rug out. Fuck it. 
Imagine how you would feel. But, uh, oh, billions, not millions. This is, these, this is a $1.9 billion project, and they never even finished it. So it was more than likely $3 billion by the end of it. And by the way, this is on an artificial island that they built. So the island has nowhere to stay on it. They built the fucking island. Like the whole, it, it's one thing if you're like, well, we'll blow up the fucking buildings and then we'll build something else. They built the island in the first place for those buildings. I know. Can I have one of those buildings? Like bring them over, ship them over here, turn, lay them on their side and just, exactly. And there are hundreds of these projects in China. Yeah, that would be a TV series over here. Can you live inside? Why blow them up? Because they didn't have the proper permits when they built them. And they're all, uh, they've been sitting so long that they are effectively, the, the foundations have been open to the uh, elements for so long that they're fucking useless. They've built like, yeah, they've built like shit to start with, but they've been exposed to um, the elements all this time. So they're just going to blow them up. And it's not the first time. I showed you guys the video of the, you know, um, uh, Chinese demolish, oops, buildings. This is the, like, there's a video of this thing. There you go, 15 buildings. Boink, USA Today. Boink, turn this off. This, this they're doing this everywhere. Imagine how many homeless people you could house in buildings of this size. Imagine, imagine, if you will, the entire homeless population of the United States has, uh, sorry, has, oh, well, I guess we could have. For these buildings stay there for seven years. One of them only fell slightly over. Look at this guy over here and knocked into the other one. This one didn't even fall. Like, ah, shit, we got to go out there and rig it up while it's half caved in. What the fuck do you do with that thing? This This guy right here. This dude. <laughs> who Hey, who wants to climb up into that thing and plant explosives so we can finish getting, red, uh, getting rid of it? Are you out of your mind? And they're back in here? There's multiple buildings like that. All throughout the city. Like this is... Yeah, their demo people are terrible. <laughs> drones, it'd have to be. That's right, Thomas. They'd have to fly drones in with explosives and just sit them down good lord we'll dive more into my adventures in china in an upcoming episode as well but this just like the doomsayers i'm sorry but you're wrong on such a a violent level and the amount of just kind of narcissistic, woe is me, whiny, only child bullshit that you that, that totally disregards the rest of the world and what it's going through w along with us and on their own, the problems that they're going to have that we are not going to have over the next three decades. It's just, like, I don't know that if you just watch the news kind of again and again, you're getting this habitual idea that all this stuff, is like, yeah, this is the normal narrative it, without this context. And maybe the people who are given the news know this context, but they think, okay, well, this is important though and people need to know about this part of it. But if they had this context, they wouldn't freak out about it. They'd just be aware and know it needs to change, right? 
If you have a problem and it needs fixing, that's one thing. But if you overwhelm people with the problem, they just give up. They're like, fuck it, I can't do anything about it. The whole, it's all, I don't know, end of the world, right? That's where everybody goes. Because they have no context. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, CSL. That'll help. That's right. That'll help me get out of here. <coughs> yeah, Biden bashing and the China phrasing is the brain dead bandwagon. And it is so tired and boring. And it's so counterproductive. We have enough challenges. Thanks, Andrea. Thank you, guys. All right, I will see you guys this afternoon. I'm going to get out of here. Much love. Take care of yourself. Take care of somebody else. I get wound up, man. I get wound up. I love talking about this stuff. And I don't even know where to start because I feel like nobody knows about it. So I got All right, bye. of the five wealthiest people in the world, known as the Pentaverit, mm. who run everything in the world, including the newspapers, and meet tri-annually at a secret country mansion in Colorado, known as the Meadows. So who's in this Pentaverit? The Queen, the Vatican, the Gettys, the Rothschilds, and Colonel Sanders before he went tits up. Classify that as a launch problem or a design problem. You are physically repulsive, intellectually retarded, vulgar, insensitive, selfish, stupid. You have no taste, a lousy sense of humor, and you smell. He's you real nice. If I didn't have puke breath, I'd kiss you. Sportos, motorheads, geeks, sluts, bloods, wastoids. Weebies, dickheads, they all adore him. They think he's a righteous dude.